Mucormycosis had accompanied human existence since a long time. It is an angio-invasive fungal infection which have high morbidity and mortality. The rise has been perceived globally, but it is very high in the Asian continent. The COVID-19 sepsis had a rampage over the human body and we are literally left for picking up the pieces. This leads to the dysregulated immune response, ciliary dysfunction, cytokine storm, thromboinflammation, microvascular coagulation and eventually exhausted immune response. This facilitates secondary bacterial and fungal infection in the patient. In this video, we will discuss regarding mycormycosis, colloquially referred as black fungus. I'm Rishika Badwa. India's COVID cases have seen a dip even as daily deaths hover around the 4,000 mark. Many people are now uh, recovering from COVID, but those who are recovering are also being infected with the black fungus or mucomycosis. As it has been more than 16 months since the pandemic took over the world. In, in the last one and a half years, we have learned a lot of new things about the virus, but new symptoms still keep showing up every day. One such symptom is doing rounds in hospitals across India, and it is called mucomycosis, better known as a black fungal infection. In camp. कोविड एसोसिएटेड म्यूकरमाइकोसिस म्यूकरमाइकोसिस एक फंगल इन्फेक्शन है इसके जो स्पोर्स हैं इस फंगस के वो मिट्टी में भी पाए जाते हैं हवा में भी पाए जाते हैं कुछ हद तक ये कहते हैं कि फूड में भी पाए जाते हैं मेरे लेफ्ट पेस में नम्बनेस आ गई थी, अपर जो लेफ्ट साइड के टीथ नम हो गए थे। हालत में सुधार तो है, एंड आई थिंक एस पर डॉक्टर्स आल्सो जितना मतलब कि नेगेटिविटी मीडिया में है, एंड आई वाज आल्सो वेरी स्केयर्ड इफ इट कैन बी डायग्नोज इनिशियल स्टेज एंड वन कैन गो टू द राइट मेडिकल केयर, आई � Mucormycosis is also known as zygomycosis, phycomycosis or hyphomycosis and it is colloquially referred as black fungus. It is an angio-invasive fungal infection which is caused by a class of molds called as mycormycetes and it is ubiquitous in nature which can be seen everywhere that is in the soil in the plant debris, water, feces, everywhere, but commonly we are seeing in the soil. It is colloquially referred as black fungus because of its black pigmentation uh, at the area where the fungus have invaded in the human body. It is going to start from the nose, spreading to the eyes, and it will be disseminated to the other parts of the body system. Then, causative organisms of uh, uh, this mycormycosis. The causative organisms of mycormycosis vary across different geographical locations. Rhizopus erisus which is the most common species isolated worldwide. Two, we have Apophysomyces variabilis, Lithemia, which is very predominant in Europe, 
The second one, which is very predominant in Asia, and Rhizobas homotalicus, mucor irregularis, and Thymnostylum leclovenus. This also have been reported uh, in Asian continent. Next, we will move to the causes of this uh, mucormycosis. So, uh, the people who have undergone the critically ill patients who are subjected to emergency invasive procedure and uh, mechanical ventilation, prolonged hospital stay, and breach of sepsis. These, those the patients who have uh, subjected to these uh, procedures, there is a more chance to get the infection. It is very important during this scenario that is in the COVID-19 because patients have admitted in the hospital and they have subjected to uh, invasive procedures, mechanical ventilation uh, to deal with their disease conditions. And if there is any uh, breach in the uh, aseptic technique in the hospital environment, then there is a chance of this secondary fungal infection. Then next one that is uncontrollable diabetes mellitus. In the diabetes mellitus patients, uh, there is a one species we have to that is called as a rhizopus. So rhizopus have an enzyme, an enzyme which is called as ketone reductase, which will allow this species to thrive inside the body of the diabetic patient as there is more glucose level and more acidic blood. So this will give a very fertile environment for the fungus to thrive inside the body of the diabetic patient. Then corticosteroids. Similarly, uh, COVID, during COVID-19, the patients are prescribed with higher doses of corticosteroids, which can weaken the immunity system of the patient. And uh, there is a chance of a spike in the level of blood glucose level, which is very challenging for the patient with diabetes mellitus. Next, the cancer patient, organ transplant, stem cell transplant, and neutropenia. So, in, ca in case of cancer patient, in case of uh, uh, the blood cancer patient, we have seen that during the initial weeks of chemotherapy, they are unable to produce more neutrophils, so which can cause uh, decreased immunity level. So, neutrophils are very important for fighting against the infection. So there is a chance of this fungal infection due to this cancer, then organ transplant, stem cell transplant because of the immunocompromisation and neutropenia. Injection drug use also another uh, cause of this uh, mycormycosis. Then hemochromatosis is a condition where there is an excessive iron content in the body. The sidrophores of rhizophores have more affinity towards the iron. The iron content environment will give more conducive uh, chances, more chances for the fungal infection to be spread inside the body. Then premature, prematurity and low birth weight babies. Always, you know that prematurity is a condition where there is most of the organ system will not be developed properly. Likewise, they have immunity level also very less in this uh, child, in this baby. So there is a chance of the infection in case of prematurity and low birth weight babies. People get mycormycosis when they have a contact with the fungal spores which is present in the environment. For example, the lung form of infection or sinus form of infection can occur after the person have inhaled the air which consists of the spores of the fungus. In vulnerable patient, once they have inhaled, then it will be go inside the nose and the sinuses. From the the spores of the fungus will be germinate to form long tubular filament. So this can be spread to the sinuses, to the lungs, to the brain, to the bone, to the eyes, and to the bloodstream. This is one of the one there is one cause another root is that is skin so you know that skin is a innate immunity when there's a breach in the skin there is a chance of the entrance of the microorganism so in case of any scraping or any injury or any wound in the skin can cause this fungal infection 
but this is is non contagious infection it cannot be spread between the people or it cannot be spread from the animal to man also okay the symptoms is completely depend upon in which area of the body has invaded with the fungus whether it is a brain whether it is a pulmonary system whether it is a uh, eyes okay symptoms can be varied so here in case of rhino cerebral mucormycosis where the mucormycosis has spread and invaded the sinus cavity and the brain we can see this type of symptoms so first one is one sided facial swelling and nasal pain so this is one of the primary mark markers of the infection right now we can also see there is a presence of ulcers multiple lesions also can be seen then necrosis also can be seen so here you can see there is a discoloration on that area this is mainly which shows that there is a invading of microorganism then we can also see severe headache that is throbbing headache and nasal or sinus congestion when a person have inhaled the spores of this fungus so it can be directly attack the nasal cavity where we can see there is a inflammatory processes and congestion and we can see the pain and severe headache also next that is blackish nasal discharge so once the fungus have invaded in the area in that particular area of the body they will be completely they will colonize in that area they will completely block the blood supply at that particular area which can cause necrosis of the tissues so because of the inflammation in the nasal cavity or the air where there is a bleeding will be there so this the blood tinged mucus can be seen as blackish uh, nasal discharge next one in case of black lesions on nasal bridge so i have told you that once the fungus have invaded that area will be completely colonized by the fungus and the blood supply to that area will be stopped which can cause the necrosis of the tissue so we can see here one of the typical symptom of this fungus where there is a blackish discoloration on the nasal bridge of the patient so here also in the upper palate also we can see that this is also because of the colonization of the fungus in that area where it has caused necrosis and fever also as a part of inflammation or infection then loss of vision so once the infection has spread from the sinus to the eyes vision can be distorted as well patient always complain Uh, somebody is complaining regarding poor vision or yeah, hazy vision and swelling of the swelling around the eyes also can be seen next one there is loosening of teeth and toothache which clearly defines that the area in the gum or in the lower jaw upper jaw area which is completely invaded by the microorganism and the blood supply to that area has blocked which shows that there is a loosening of the teeth and toothache will be the swelling in the upper jaw because of this uh, uh, inflammatory process necrosis and ulceration then you can see the facial paralysis also so once it shows that the invasion of the fungus has goes to the parasinuses upper palate and the upper jaw and the facial nerves also which can cause facial paralysis so if it is not stopping the then if it is uh, invading the brain also there is a more serious condition and it has seen that the chances of dying is 50 percentage the patient will have the problem in the nervous system they will complain regarding the delirium memory loss neurological impairment and altered mental status also which needs very immediate very high attention for the
patient's rescue. Next, uh, we will move to the pulmonary mucormycosis. So this can be happen when the fungus has spread to the pulmonary system, where we can see that cough and fever, chest pain and shortness of breath. So this clearly indicates that the fungus has invaded the pulmonary system, which can cause lung consolidation. Next, which is called as cutaneous mycormycosis. So this can be happen when the fungus has invaded any part of the skin. So in the picture, we can see that the infected area will be turned black and the patient will have pain and uh, you can see warmth will be there. You can see the redness around the uh, blackish area, okay, blackish spot. You can see that and swelling also will be there. So actually this is indicates that we can see the blisters also. Though. So blisters also because actually I have told you that that area will be blocked by the uh, block from the uh, blood supply. So necrosis of tissues will be there which will be give the pigmentation of the black. Black pigmentation will be there because of the necrosis of the tissues that can be seen in the cutaneous mycosis. Next one that is gastrointestinal micromycosis. So it will be occur when the fungus have invited the gastrointestinal system which will be manifested by abdominal pain, nausea and vomiting, gastrointestinal bleeding. So you can see here there is a necrotic area, the jejunum. Okay, so actually there will be active inflammation, ulceration and necrosis. Micromycosis lesions are necrosis ulcers which can lead to the perforation and peritonitis. Bowel infarction and hemorrhagic shock can also be seen in this condition. Next one, disseminated mucormycosis. It can be happen when the fungus is spreading all over the body hematogenously where we can see that there is a ulceration and necrosis in the area where it has invited. At the same time, we can see there is a discoloration in the big toe and there is a uh, necrosis, necrotic center with erythematous halo on the abdomen area. We have seen that. So this is an indication of disseminated uh, mucormycosis. The problem is that disseminated mucormycosis have been accompanied with some other medical conditions. So it is very difficult to conclude that whether the symptoms is belongs to the mucormycosis or associated uh, morb disease. If it is going to spreading to the brain, then there is a chance of altered, uh, altered mental status and even coma also. Next, how we are going to diagnose? So first one is the medical history. We are going to see the past and present medical history of the patient. Then we have to see the symptoms of the disease. So we have discussed many symptoms here. Then we are going for the physical examination. Last one, laboratory test. So here, if in case of lung infection, we are going for the respiratory fluids and we are going to send to the laboratory. And tissue biopsy also taking for the analyzation of the, to analyze uh, the presence of fungal infection. Uh, then next one is we are going to go for, we are going to take the CT scan. So CT scan of the lungs or the other parts of the sinuses and other parts of the body where you are suspecting the uh, infection. Next, we will discuss regarding the treatment. We have very effective antifungal agent against mycormycosis, which is called as liposomal amphotericin BIV, which can be given at least 10 days and the treatment has to be prolonged for several weeks. The starting dose, this, the starting dose is 5 mg per kilogram daily and most of the clinicians is going to increase the, the dose as high as 10 mg per kilogram daily to deal with the infection. In COVID-19 patient, there is a chance of acute or chronic renal failure which can be mitigated by less nephrotoxic alternative which is called as posaconazole and isavaconazole. 
which can be which can be given both intravenously and orally in case of posaconazole which can be started with a loading dose of 300 mg every 12 hours on the first day which is followed by 300 mg every 24 hours thereafter second one is sabuconazole it will be started it will be given as a loading dose of 200 mg every 8 hours for the first six doses which is followed by 200 mg every 24 hours thereafter so this is regarding uh, this um, posaconazole and isavaconazole next one is azithromycin we are going to still we are going to continue the treatment the next very pivotal role have surgical debridement as there is a necrosis of tissues in the various parts of the body we need this surgical uh, debridement is very important because we want to clean that area we want to remove that uh, dead tissues which is very important in the uh, patient then in less severe cases the doctors insert endoscope through the nasal cavity and remove the diseased tissue so if uh, the infection has spread further then they have to remove that area maybe the eyes or maybe the jaw bone that area has to be removed to prevent the further invasion of uh, fungus to the other areas of the body then adjunct therapy with the caspofungin defrasterox statins aspirin and hyperbaric oxygen this also can be considered but this is the aspect which is coming under the research and still the research is going on uh, related to its relevancy and efficacy the thing is that the most important thing is that the mucormycosis has to be it has to be deal with not only one department it needs a team of departments many people from uh, the department from many people has to be collaborate and they have to work for the betterment and the treatment process and the rehabilitative process of the patient who has invaded with mucormycosis next we will move to the prevention so one of the best remedy is that the people has to be very cautious regarding their glucose level because we have seen that in the diabetes mellitus patients there is a more chance for this type of infection so good high, good glycemic control is very important then use of steroids with cautiously and by abiding the proper guidelines of using the corticosteroids then the wearing mask mask wearing not only really protect you from this mycomycosis it is going to protect from most of the communicable uh, airborne diseases and droplet infection the next one when we are doing when we are doing any outdoor activities there should be uh, we should use the shoes uh, then uh, long sleeve shirt and uh, when we are uh, handling the soil manual and all we can use the gloves then uh, to prevent the developing of the skin infection so we can have a proper hand washing and that area has to be properly cleaned with soap and water abiding the infection control proper infection control so you know that in the hospital we have seen that uh, in the covid patients there is a, there was a chance of this infection there is a chance of this infection uh, because of the prolonged stay so there is a chance of nosocomial infections also so abiding the proper protocol of the infection control uh, it is very important then personal hygiene personal hygiene is going to protect you from most of the infections it will always keep you away from the disease condition so uh, this is regarding mycormycosis i hope you all understand my video we don't have the time to be panic because survival is our necessity the mankind has encountered with many diseases like this before also but the human race had gain a legendary success in that we will survive this pandemic also stay home stay safe thank you all